Your love I'll cherish to my grave And if you should die before I do I'll end my life to be with you James Boogaloo Bolden played trumpet with B.B. King for more than 35 years and served as music director and band leader. He was uh, genuine, he was, um, he was loving, he was caring. He was, uh, he was always concerned about your welfare and uh, your well-being and, you know, he tried to keep you happy. Bolden is determined to keep blues music alive and to carry on King's legacy. There will never be another B.B. King, but there's, uh, there are uh, talented musicians coming up now that, uh, that we may not even know yet. But now I can forget you, all that free, free from your spell. My music, is, approach to music is similar to B.B. because I like all the different styles of music, so not only do I do the traditional blues, I have jazz and funk influence into my music too. Bolden is a member of a band called Original Legends of the Blues. They don't see themselves as legends, but each member has played with blues legends. We, we have different members that are from, that have played with different people, people who, uh, with BB, People with uh, uh, Gatemouth uh, Brown, people with Chuck Berry, uh, Matt Murphy, Murphy uh, and these guys bring their own uh, experience into the group. Because of an accident-related disability, the man who put this group together, manager Kobe Cruz, remains in Los Angeles while the musicians record in Houston, but he keeps in contact with producer Eric Demmer through phone calls and Skype. He has given me what he wants out of it and then I've kind of taken the rest and kind of molded the direction of where the band is going. <laughs> The owner of the Red Shack Studio is recording engineer and musician Rock Romano, who's been involved in Houston's music scene since the early 1960s. Well, this band was a really popular band. We were, we were, we were one of the top two or three bands in Houston. Over the years, Rock has collected a lot of memorabilia while producing hits in almost every style and genre. I always really loved putting the music together and producing, but as far as dealing with the people I had to deal with in the music business, it was just it wasn't I wasn't cut out for it. I don't think you know. So I've uh, kept quietly here and uh, done the best I could to make people sound good. <laughs> It's a funky place, but you know, this place has got such history and it's just got a vibe. I'm definitely in awe of these people. And, and um, they're awesome musicians, and they're, they've got so much history and so much class. Eric and I are in the control room and trying to figure out in between the notes whether it's working or not. And these cats are cool enough to go, oh, okay, we'll fix that. You're rushing on the, on the toms. Well, yeah, you're pushing too far ahead of the band on the toms. So just relax the, the fills. Hey, Rock, how's the voice? Because I moved the mic a little bit. Ah, 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 
same thing, but they're on a different track. Charlie Dennis has been with the BB King Band since 2002. Then we started realizing that BB is getting older, so we started working on trying to work on other projects to get to keep stuff going on. You know what I mean? We create some all together with these different moods and vibes and, and playing abilities. You know. I got no education. No education. I can't even say it. I'm just a fool in your town. legend Clarence Gatemouth Brown for 12 years. His feel that he had for the blues was probably one of the best I'd ever heard. When you really get to hear him play, he definitely had the concept of the blues. I think probably there was nobody that was better. Uh, and with Gate, it was never a dull moment because uh, he was, Gate was a character. When they made him, they broke the mold because I don't think there's anybody else I've ever met like him. I was with him uh, up till about four days before he died, and I, it was real hard to see that happen. And uh, it was, you know, I felt like uh, you know, it would have been nice to have him around a few more years. One way of keeping this music alive is to involve younger musicians, like 19-year-old guitarist Noah Lopez, who stops by Bira Peretti's restaurant for the Eric Demmer Band's regular gig. They came first. They're the ones that did it. They're the ones, that, and especially with the blues, those original guys is what's really responsible for all the stuff you hear on the, on the radio today. I mean, through progression of time, but I mean, it started back then with those guys. So playing all those years with Gatemouth Brown, what did you learn? Really, Gatemouth was all about the feel and the notes. He would want you to tell a story. You have a beginning, you have an end, and then you have in the middle, but you're, you're, t you're going somewhere. Make a statement when you play so every note that you play means something. You want to find a way to make one note mean more than 10. When you're playing melodically and playing with feeling and expression, you're creating something. And that's, that was something that was very crucial with him. Uh, and actually, a lot of the guys were like that. The original legend guys, they are very demanding. I mean, you got to play. You got to really bring it or, or you're not there. Later, Eric invites Noah Lopez to jam with the band. Keyboard master Barry Seelan has played with such blues artists as Matt Guitar Murphy and Mighty Sam McLean. There are young people that are interested in playing it and I usually make a point of thanking them for being interested in carry on, carrying on a, a tradition. In 
so happy that, that I'm considered worthy enough to have any kind of a torch passed my way. And I'll do my best to keep it moving to the next. I want to start the whole thing over again. Here it is again. It's a lot of hours, man. And to get the result, if you don't love it, you're better off doing something that's a little more profitable. Bass player Russell Jackson has played with blues giants Buddy Guy and Otis Clay, as well as B.B. King. Through Otis Clay and playing with Buddy Guy in, uh, around Chicago is where I got the job playing with B.B. King, which I played with B.B. for seven years, from uh, January 79 through uh, 1986. Zero, three. The first thing you have to accomplish as the bass player to do your job bringing the band together, making the band sound good. And then second is also being able to, to step out front and play sort of like a solo bass to say, hey, this is also an instrument too. And that's my whole uh, deal is to keep Willie Dixon's legacy alive because he's one of the few cats that played blues bass, led the band, wrote a lot of great songs, and, and kept that big bass in the blues alive. I hear a lot of buzz in, sound like my little honeybee. She went all over the world making honey, now she coming back home to me. People of all races now love the blues, but it grew out of the experience of African Americans living in southern states after the end of slavery. The field houses went into the gospel, and then the gospel went into blues because everyone wasn't necessarily in the church. So the, 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 the ones that weren't in church, they took the music another way and, and then made it became blues. So it became just like, you know, an everyday man's music. Now, other people, they listen to it and they say, well, okay, I wasn't a slave, but, man, I had a hard time paying this bill last month. I mean, uh, I'm about to lose this job. You know, uh, oh, man, my, my lady and I, we're not doing well. You know, uh, we, we split up, you know. So you still, you know, it doesn't matter. You, you still have, have experiences that you can relate to the blues music. I know you won't admit it because you sit next to your loved one. But in the dark, 
in the bathroom, in the garage, out in the car when you're away from somebody. You even felt this way one time or another. Here we go. In Jackson, Mississippi, I was fortunate enough, I started in 58 or 59, but being young like that, I was fortunate enough to play with John Lil John and my man, the sky is crying, Elmo James. They came to Jackson and we went to Vicksburg, Mississippi. I'll never forget that. That was one of the thrills of my life. And since I got a little time, I have a book out too. It's called The Amazing Jimmy Mays. Pull that book up, baby. It's called Amazing Jimmy Mays, Side Man to the Stars. Later on tonight, we're going to have this book for sale. So keep an eye out for that, right? So I better, I better be His cool book tells of the many famous right musicians here. and singers Jimmy Mays has known, and of the special friendship he developed with a young left-handed guitarist in the mid-1960s. So I actually stole Jimmy Hendrix from the Isley Brothers. And uh, I went to meet him, and he was laid up in the bed, had his little turned down boots, and had his guitar in the bed with him. That was his trademark, he kept that guitar with him. Where he was staying, he couldn't practice. So he had to come to my apartment to practice, and he still owed me some cab fare. Because sometimes I used to have to pay for the cab to bring his amp and his guitar and his Bob Dylan album. I couldn't stand Bob Dylan. Please crawl out of your window and all that. I wasn't into no Bob Dylan. And Jimmy would sit there and practice, and I would get bored. I used to just leave the apartment because I couldn't understand what he was doing, but he was perfecting his style, his singing style. If you listen to anything he's doing, you can hear Bob Dylan in his voice because Jimmy is not a singer, singer, but he did his own style. Hey, look out for my glass out there, man. That's my drink, man. Make it a double. But well, somebody has to say, somebody got the same. Well, I'll say, pass me that bottle, and I'll sing a song for you, baby. Well, I'm looking through Harlem, and my stomach begins to swell a little more. A stage goes full of feathers, and footprints pull up to my soapbox door. Now I'm a lady with a pearl handle necktie tied to the driver's fence. Well, it's not so easy, especially when your friend talks, look, and feels like you, and uh, you look the same as him. Barry Seelan has written a tune inspired by the intersection of Royal and St. Peter Streets in New Orleans. I have like one verse of lyrics. I'm going to need help with lyrics. Okay. A clarinet begins to wail, and you can pot it down to no avail. Let the good times roll the way they play for the soul. Yeah, yeah, that works. That's all I got so far. Yeah. <laughs> I think just one more verse. And yeah, one describing more. like a scene of people partying in the street in the French Quarter. And that would be that would be it. That's it. Everybody yeah. solos. Yeah, yeah. Boom again at yeah. the end. Same ones. Yeah, that that, that and worked. And we're out. That worked. Yeah.
Uh, and so, Charlie, the changes are um, C up to the five. Yeah. In G, yeah. Right. Sorry. And the five. Yeah, something like something, yeah. something like that. And then this right here is like flat three, and you go three, you know, diminished to the four, and then another half sub diminished, C sharp diminished. Okay. It's a C sharp diminished, and a one six two five. for Jazz Fest. I always take a weekend off to go mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And that's where she likes to go in like all her little stores and shit right there on yeah. Rose Street. Yeah. And I get a cold beer from the grocery store right there and I sit up and there's this lady that plays a clarinet out there ah. right on that corner. Ah. Okay. And I can just stand there and listen to music while she oh. goes in out her stores and stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I got home from that's that That's that New Orleans thing, man. I got home from that show. I was just laying there in bed I just heard this melody. Mm -hmm. Like laying there then I started complete, completing it in my head, uh -huh. making my like waking moments. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. Let me go out to my room and hit record so I don't forget this. Right, right, right. I think we should do a trumpet solo on this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, uh, what might be cool is to do like a, a trumpet sax. It was a collaboration, and that's kind of what a lot of writing is today. You know, you can collaborate with and uh, add a line here or there, or, you know, so. Uh, I mean, he it basically it's his tune. He wrote the words. I just kind of I just kind of help push it along a little bit, and uh, I love the tune. I think it's a great tune. Played a lot in New Orleans, and uh, you know, so I th every time I think about New Orleans, I always think about Royal and St. Pete. Down in the French Quarter, let me tell you about a certain street. It's that special place. Royal in St. Pete A clarinet begins to wail And the party starts to sail Let the good times roll The way they play is good for the soul Some extra guitar licks were provided later by Jay Gordon and Mark May. At the time of the recording, Jimmy Mays was hampered by a hip still recovering from surgery. So Herman Jackson came in to redo some of the tracks. Recording digitally allows Eric and Rock to fix little problems, but it takes time. I don't get a record in here that I don't mess around with the pitch of something or another a little bit, you know, the string being out of tune or, a, you know, somebody having a great vocal performance, except there's a couple of flat notes that, you know, you can go in there and fix. Well, because we've added and added and, and replaced and changed and did all kinds of stuff, we're having to go in and and just make it all fit. 
The feedback that I get from people are they're loving the fact that these recordings sound so primitive and raw. And I've worked hours and centuries on them, you know, to make them as refined as I can get. But they're just funky to start out with, and that's what we're trying to capture. With the release of the CD, Original Legends of the Blues Still Carrying the Flame, the group members now look forward to getting together again for some live performances. We kind of all can, can relate to each other's story. So that's why we're coming together. It's been a great fit. <laughs> yeah, we listen to Boogaloo and Charlotte talk about some of the things with BB. And Eric be talking about Gate Mouse Brown. There's a lot of history in this group. It's just a lot of fun to be around each other. Let me go.